I have to tell you about a very long time ago, not a long time ago, but I bet 10 years ago somebody offered me a lot of money for this. Nope, I'm not going to sell it. And there's hardly any freaking corrosion. Somebody dug in there for something to look at something. I'll get Ricky to fix that. Little things here and there, all sorts of cool switches and stuff. The porta potty. Oh, it's looking forward. Okay, so let's go forward. Like I said there's the ammo shoots from the ammo things are up there. And more than likely, that was probably a uh, a center of gravity consideration because they didn't want to have a lot of ammo back here. Then you'd get a big so the closer you could get to the uh, forward or closer to the CG you could get with the ammo up there, it would mean less of an impact when it was full of ammo, when it was out of ammo. So that would have been probably a design consideration there. Got our little ladder. Let's see what that says. Can't really read it. But I'm pretty sure that would have been for a trailing antenna. It just kind of looks like it right there. They would roll that out there and they could get far, far more range than what they normally could. Okay, so heading up front. This is rather inspiring. I just want to mention I am completely standing up now. This has more headroom than a golf stream. Just saying. certainly has a lot more ambience, but I'm not thinking you're going to get a lot of dates coming in here. Oh, well, there we go. Kermit figured it out. Okay, so this goes up here, and obviously latches there somewhere. I just pulled this little pin out right here, right there. I don't know how I can do this with two hands, but if that goes up, Okay, so I just picked it up. Here we go. Okay, and that pops that out there for the gunner. Pretty cool. You wave to your friends when you're flying down the beach. That's how it works. All right. Okay, I'm sure that's for the. I'm sure that's for the turret. Whether or not this was the original B24 up and down thing I don't know but uh, but it looks like if the turret was mounted pretty much around this area it would pretty much be completely inside the deal now how it worked with the guns pointed where the hell they pointed I don't know okay so that was that radio compartment I think he sometimes little curtains here he, he, if he did like psychic readings with a crystal ball, you know, this was just, you know, just to give the people a little bit of uh, privacy. Okay, so here we go down the bomb bay. And I got to tell you, one of the things about being a B-24 guy is at some point with the bomb doors open, you have to walk the plank. I'm just saying. That's part of the part of the process of being a B-24 pilot, crew member anyway. Yeah, so both sides for opening and closing the bomb doors. See how that works. Ooh, it's a lot easier to go down, I'm just saying. Uh, probably needs a little bit of oil to it, a little bit of grease. All sorts of cool stuff. Not as much on this side. Oh, look at that. The thing's moving. That must have something to do with the hydraulically opening the bomb doors or something. There's a hydraulic pump there. All sorts of cool stuff. Fuel selector valve, landing gear emergency lowering instructions. I'm not going to worry about that right now. 
now, but that's how you would do it. Fuel selector on the other side. Man, that is a big auxiliary hydraulic pump switch on. We'll just leave that off for now. Uh, emergency hydraulic fire. There was some other ones back there too I saw that you would shut off for certain different emergencies. Oxygen. Okay, so here we're coming up into the cockpit. i tell you what, we'll do that last. Okay, so there's your APU generator. Use that to start the, uh, you know, you got basically a couple of batteries would sit right there and that would start this and this would start the the engines some old radios oh my god oh my god i'm gonna get dirty i can see this so that's a tail jet or a tail jack i think right there to keep the in case in case you get somebody sitting in the back that's a big butt and uh, they end up uh, that that looks so familiar. They got like that in the B-17. That's a air for maybe an accumulator or something like that. Anyway, the batteries would sit there. That's another accumulator there. This little thing here looks like for the nose gear doors. Of course, there's the nose gear right there. Um, and then to get up to the turret, we've got to go up this little section here. Ouch. This thing's dirtier than crap. Something right there. I don't know what that, know what that runs. Uh, anyway. So here we go. I feel like I'm back in the Martin Mars. Oh my god. The heater solenoid. Gotta have that in Florida. All this original freaking canvas and stuff. So that's the other side of the nose gear door. The tire looks like it needs to be changed before we fly the airplane again. Oh my god! Looks like an ammo box here. I'm gonna get in this. Oh my god! Ugh. Okay. So, there's an ammo can, there's an ammo chute for the front turret. That looks like. A, what do you call that thing? You know, for navigation, you're checking your drift, looking at the ground, checking drift and stuff. I think that's what that's for. So this would have been the navigator. Whoa! That board just about busted my butt there. Okay, so while we're here, I think this would have been the navigator table. This would have been some big giant piece of navigation equipment. Somewhere they would have had a bomb site up here. I wonder if that's part of a Norton bomb site. Where the hell were the oh there's the bomb site right here. There we go. Okay so this is kind of a kind of an early one. This is not a Norton bomb site. I don't know what that is. It's a grip here warning fragile mirror undercover bomb site. Got some little levers there. For looking at something or whatever. Anyway, we'll figure it all out. Yeah, a little compass. Yeah, see, this probably goes out and then looks down. I think that's a drift meter. I think that's what that is. Anyway, okay, so here's the back of the instrument panel. Go pilot over there. Pilot over here. All sorts of... Uh, some new fittings, these blue anodized ones were not World War II, this was World War II. And of course they had all the, all everything was marked, oh, that wasn't good. Anyway, I wonder if I've earned a purple heart, I'm just saying. I got a red arm, that's for sure. Anyway, so there's some more, oh, whatever, needs a little bit of, WD-40. Yeah, so navigator would here. So this would have been for the uh, shooting the stars and doing sun shots and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so here we go. Uh, this obviously is a safety deal here because the turret's spinning around in the front. This guy back here doesn't want to get doesn't want to get his ponytail caught in the door up here. So the door 
this door closes differently than the other one. It needs a little bit of work. I'll get Rick on that right away. And uh, anyway, so this is a different model turret. Make sure I bust my butt down there. The guns are there, pointed up, so we don't pe hit people's heads on the museum. See that little piece of glass been taken out? I think we're going to loan them all the glass, and they're basically just going to make us some new glass. Uh, that looks like a little more comfortable seat than the one in the back. And this one, these would be the dead man switches. So you'd have to have both hands pushed on that before you could operate this, then run back and forth. Yeah, so you can manually run the guns up and down, I think, or something like whatever, anyway. So you can see some of the feed chute right there, okay. And you can see a 50 caliber bullet would have sat in there. This has got a pretty basic gun sight here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. The motor down there. Of course, if we restored the airplane, we'd get all this stuff to work. Anyway. Okay. So that's that. Okay, so now we have to reverse the process. You can see the co-pilot seat right there. The rudder pedals in the front. The pilot seat right here. Pedals in the front with a modern radio stuffed down there. Oh my god. Yeah, so we ripped everything out in Louisville when we were coming back of Kankakee to no uh Palwaukee to Kankakee, Kankakee down to Louisville and the third number three engine started banging or something like that and I just said screw it. So we landed and spent the night, had a friend there. Ended up spending a bunch of time. Yeah, looks like Ken's got a job too, I'm just saying. That's looking back in the Bombay. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now we're coming up the hole here. All right. And we got an upper turret right there. Although, I don't know where the seat is. Anyway, let's get up here first. Is this cooler and crap or what? I mean, this thing is so freaking original. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of upholstery work to do there. So this would have been where this, they call them flight attendants these days, but back then they were stewardess would sit there. That would have been, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, whatever. Um, little things there, I can put stuff in there. Uh, so the upper turret was here. In this case, this would have been your dead man switch right there. It's been, it's got a lock on it or something anyway. So that's off there. Some ammo cans. That doesn't look like a whole hell of a lot of ammo. Oh, there would have been another one over here we're missing. And the guy, I can't get up there, but basically that's what he would have looked out of. Okay. And you can see the little feed chutes right here. That would have been the gun side. He's got a little way to cool himself off. There would have been the, that way. This thing here, pulling the triggers would be like right there. Get the spider webs out. Uh, man, this is like going into the Indiana Jones archive room. Yeah, so emergency landing gear to extend landing gear. Turn handle clockwise approximately 30 times. Okay. Not sure what that is. Looks like a heater or something like that. Okay, here we come up. This is the cool part. All right, there is the pilots and the cloud. Ow! My seat. Dead dragonfly. Okay. Oh my God! 
I can't even remember flying this thing. It was so long ago. Obviously, I don't know how to open the window. There we go. Oh, it just slides back. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is freaking hot and crap in here. Oh, whatever. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, pilot fuse box. Uh, heat for the suit. I'm plenty hot, I don't need that right now. Needs a little bit of insulation. Okay, so lock at the white line. We got the control lock in right here. Okay, so I'm not going to wiggle that stuff around. Uh, control wheel here. Uh, there would have been some kind of modern radio here. It's not in there yet or now. Um, these are hydraulic pressure for what? I'm not quite sure. Brake pressure, inboard, outboard. That's kind of weird. I'm not sure why two, unless they just happen to have, you know, this on both sides of the brakes or something. Hydraulic pressure in the main pressure. Maybe that's brake main. I don't know what those are inboard. That's pressure. Anyway, okay, so we got altimeter. Um, PDI, pilot direction indicator. I think that basically flies. I can't remember. I can't remember if that was hooked to the bomb side or that was hooked to the. It might have been hooked to the bomb side when he said it. Airspeed, directional gyro, turn and slip indicator, rate of climb, artificial horizon, radio compass. That's kind of like an early, basically an ADF or whatever. Manual course control. So it had some kind of an autopilot. Uh, I think this was for all the autopilot right here. That would have been set up there. Um, flare release, lights, this would have been elevator trim, uh, probably aileron trim, rudder trim usually is up high or somewhere, I don't know where the rudder trim is, that might be rudder, oh there we go, rudder trim, aileron trim, elevator trim, um, radio over here, modern one, Wing flaps, landing gear, emergency bomb release. That's the control lock right there. Uh, a bunch of switches that are so faded. FA probably wouldn't let us fly an airplane like this. There's your. Uh, there must be electric props, so you could individually tweak each electric prop. But if you want to like gang move them to get a like on takeoff, you they take off your full full propellers or whatever. You know, your full full on takeoff, and then when you first get up there, you know, you bring them back like that to get them in the ballpark. Then the flight, the co pilot would probably like tweak them there and listen to it and look at it, the RPM gauges, which are right here. So one and two are over here, three and four are there. And a full pressure one and two, three and four, three and four being on the right side, one and two on the excuse me, port side. Uh, fuel pressures both sides. Oil pressure both sides for all four engines, cylinder head temps, and oil temperatures. Um, where's the oil pressures? Where were the oil pressures? Oh, there's carb temps. Can I already go by the oil? Yeah, oil pressure right there. What am I looking at? Okay. This would have been your little IFF lights. No, no, different radio frequencies. It would have been like five pre selected radio frequencies. Um, I'm pretty sure there's your main switches over there with a gang bar. Um, uh, electrical panel over there, batteries, uh, the generators probably ran there somewhere. Anyway, fuse boxes, oxygen. Um, so that's basically it. And up here we've got some more radio stuff. It's kind of like upside down. Anyway, um, more radio stuff here. These would be the feathering for feathering the props, you know, and checking them on uh, the seal, make sure they work, you know, and if you've had a feathering engine, because your throttles are here uh, and your mixtures are here. The prop controls are electric, and this is your turbo boost selector. So if you go on, if you go to takeoff, you probably go up to 10. 
I don't think it'll go. It over boosted a little bit to there, so it's got a little red line between 9 and 10 there. And then, you know, you see you'd bring it back, and what it would do, there'd be some wastegates there that would basically control, you know, the amount of boost. It would, I mean, the, the thing's spinning all the time, but basically, you know, depending on how much the back pressure is, it would spin up the turbine and, you know, basically add more air to the system as you went higher, as you started to lose pressure. Those look like uh, punching the fire bottles, probably, in case you had a fire. Uh, what the hell are those for? I don't think you have, where are the fire things for? Because there should be four, I think. Unless they only care about the ones that are close to you. Anyway, the seat adjusts, you know, basically. See the rudder pedals. You can see the little red things on it. You can actually adjust them forward or back on the little tracks. On both sides there. That's the pilot side there. Yeah, you know, it's got fire bottles. It's got to have them somewhere. Anyway, that's basically it. So, so we ended up getting the airplane uh, down to Florida. Um, I was a little reluctant to bring it in initially to the grass runway, so we kept it over at the Lakeland Airport. Um, I think the grass was still growing, uh, and you know I was still a little unsure of how short I could get it in because we were you know using up pretty good good amounts of runway, uh, just being safe. Because you got to remember, I just jumped in the airplane <laughs> after reading the manual, and we ended up flying. Uh, six air shows. One of them, somebody else did. I, I took it over to, uh, I might have had it at Sun and Fun. I remember going over to Sanford to a show. Uh, we had some formation shots with the Collings of B-24. And then I made the decision. I We had one fuel tank, number three, uh, that was had a little bit of a leak in it, and uh, you know it was not a good idea to have a fuel tank leaking over a hot spinning turbo with exhaust. So anyway, so we were very cautious about that, and finally, you know, I said uh, I'm gonna bring this thing in here. Uh, felt comfortable, you know, coming in. You know, did some short field landings uh, over at one of the bigger airports, and I came in here, landed at Fantasy of Flight two weeks before our grand opening party on uh, November 11th, 1995. And I said, we are never going to fly this airplane again until it's completely restored. Now, I think they built 18,000. There was, uh, I think there might be maybe 12 left on the planet. You know, there's like uh, uh, Collings Airplane's the only legitimate B-24 flying. The CAF's got an LB-30, which they've dolled up to look like a B-24. It's basically a B-24, but it was not built as a bomber. It was built as a, you know, a, a transport kind of an airplane, I think. Anyway, so uh, this is going to be the only other one. Every one all the other ones are in national museums. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Karma Weeks, B-24 Karma Cam, over and out.